especially Germans, um, and, and the Netherlands, the Dutch people, are uh, campers, camper souls. This is what they are. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Well, we're shooting our third video with Zach and Eddie. Well, I'm wearing you guys out. You're, you're going to have to join the actors union or something. I'm going to have to pay you. Absolutely not. We appreciate what you are doing. Uh, thank you. Uh, so this is our third video together. We did a video uh, learning about how a Europeans can come here and travel indefinitely, legally. And so if you're interested in that, that will tell you. Uh, then we met, we met, uh, looked around in their very nice class A, beautiful class A. Very, Thank you. Very Thank you. beautiful <laughs> class A. And now we're going to learn about Americans going to Europe and traveling in vans. Can you be a snowbird and travel in, in Europe the way that many Europeans come here and do that? So we'll find out. It's a little, everything, anything having to do with the government is complicated. So what we're going to tell you is current to our understanding now, but it changes fast. I imagine you've seen a lot of changes since you've been watching it. For a lot of Americans, we don't completely understand the European Union. Uh, is it kind of like a, Germany is a state within the European Union? Is that an, a fair it's, analogy? It's kind of, kind of the United States. It's just the re European um Union, United European uh, States. The huge difference is this is all countries. Right. And they came together. Um, With different languages, different laws, cultures. So, cultures. Exactly. Yeah. But for the economy, for helping each other also, they came together to make it more easier um, when, when they trade or. So this is the idea of the European Union. The European Union has made it much easier for an American traveler to move around. Um, so I guess the most basic question I can ask is, if I decide I want to spend six months in Europe and go there and buy a van or rent a van and just live out of my van, is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it could be complicated to register and insure. When you buy it, yeah. especially what we can now tell you about Germany, it is maybe not possible or really um, difficult to buy one and register it when you are not living in, in Germany. We can't tell if there is other countries where you can do it. Maybe easier, but not in, in Germany. What you can do is you can rent it and you can go around. And you can ask for long-term rent uh, rentals or you can rent an RV also. Not not a problem to rent an RV, but um, yeah, that is uh, expensive. It's expensive. Yeah, yeah, it is. If you want to travel cities and you want to just go around Europe and want to travel cities, there is some programs for rail system that you that you get a card and you have huge benefits and it's you buy it once and you have free free um, rail system. You can free travel, and that's good when you go for the bigger cities because you don't want to handle it in tiny Europe, in tiny crowded and packed cities and go around with no experience driving in Europe. So that's maybe the best solution going um, to the main station is mostly in the center of the big cities and you can explore it. That's great. If you want to see more nature, go for rental RV or combine it, combine both of it. Uh, if you do the rail, you can get hostels and you, are, there's a good system of hostels Absolutely. across yeah. Europe. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And probably reasonably priced. Yeah. Yeah. And you were saying earlier that uh, there are snowbirds in, in Europe. You, there are people that they're, they're citizens. Maybe they're citizens of a northern country and they travel yeah. by with the weather. So that is possible. Yeah, absolutely. We were travelers and um, most all of the life that we spent together. We had a small class C, we had a converted minivan. We had um, at least two camper trailers that we traveled all the time. We spent the winter, one winter, before we moved to Spain, we, we spent a winter in, in Spain for three months. We went with a travel trailer and we spent it um, boondocking and, and on, on campgrounds. There is lots of campgrounds, most of it. 
But there is also this uh, snowboard, they call it boondog, not, not boondog, they call it freestanding. Free the freestander. So they, they stay like boondocking out on the coast and, and, and spend their winter, spend their time. And then they go back to their, to their home state uh, or home country. So in Spain, if you flew into Spain and could afford to rent a, a van, you could stay in the van in places if you knew where they were. And yeah. that would be the hard part, knowing where they were. Yeah, there are not so many places like here. So there's no BLM, no Forest Service boondocking. So it's harder to find good there spots. There are still apps. But you can find some. And, but they are crowded, so right. it's different than here. Right. But there is also these spots where you can just stand. And it's like a parking lot, you pay 10 bucks a day, oh. and you just stand there in Sevilla, in the center of Sevilla, um, on a river, a nice spot, lots of campers. They can come in, pay for a secured parking spot, that's it, it's nothing more, and then they spend the time in in, the, in a huge city. Yeah, that's that's uh, possible. Yeah. Well, then that is is very good because ten dollars a day is cheap. You yeah. can have your own stove, set up a little kitchen inside, and cook, and you could live. You could travel Europe very cheaply that yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Hi everyone. A quick interruption in today's video to bring you a word from our sponsor, who is. Oh, that's right. I don't have sponsors. Today's sponsor is me. I'm the sponsor of this video. And what I want to tell you about real quickly is I'm offering a course on both Skillshare.com and Udemy.com that gives will tell you everything you need to find out and know if you're brand new to the road. So if you're looking for one spot where every question will be answered of the basics of living on the road, I have it for you. It's five and a half hours of content spread out over 19 courses. Uh, it's going to help you get on the road and give you a great head start. So to go to find me there, just go to udemy.com or skillshare.com and search on Bob Wells, Cheap RV Living, and you'll find me. Or, of course, I'll have links down in the description below. So let's go back to the video now. Do you know of any other countries where that, uh, we, I think we were mentioning Greece. Was that possible? Greece, Greece is, yeah, yeah, Greece is, is possible. It, Italy is possible for boondocking. But it's not, not allowed is Germany. Just uh, not going to happen No, no, no. You can try to park, but um, it's just allowed to overnight on, in rest areas. And it's not allowed to go on forest roads. This is closed. This is just for, for forest service and not, not for boondocking. There was no boondocking in Germany. For example, we had this B&B in, in, in Spain. We created some spots for people, for campers. Because we were a campers of our own, we created some spots, eight or ten, ten at least. And we gave them um, power, hook up, and we had outside showers for them. Um, and they could use the pool, the swimming pool. But um, when, when we sold that business, and the people that took that over, they came also with a Class C, a very small Class C. What they now do is they rent out this Class C. So this is private renting out. And that's great because you can make, you can deal with them, you can negotiate with them. When you, when you say, hey, I need it for three months, make a good price. Then you can negotiate. This is not a company. This is more um, helping each other thing. They make money out of it, you save money. Do you know of any uh, websites or in, apps that in, you would in, send In this particular to? case, it's just that, that you go to yeah. Finca Vegana and then ask them. And But but we had never had the interest of doing this, so we but had But there is research. a website, but unfortunately I don't know what the name... Do a Google search on private RV yeah. rental Spain, yes. or maybe the individual country where yeah. it is. There's also this boondocking opportunity, like free campsites or Compendium, what people use here, these apps, it's also in for for Europe available. Not Compendium and, and free campsites, but others. And you can find camp spots, um, what is called Stellplätze, um, spots where you can where, where you can where you park. can park. That's, we were also on one of these apps when we created these spots for the campers, and we saw the recommendation of people were satisfied with it, and especially Germans, um, and. And the Netherlands, the Dutch people are campers, camper souls. This is what they are. Um, 
when <laughs> when the Dutch people go on vacation, they do they they pull a trailer. So most of them, lots of them, and we have lots of companies building trailers, building uh, RVs. So that is a huge uh, thing in in Europe to go camping. And you mentioned earlier that you could be staying in in rest areas. I think you said that about Germany. Is that true of most of the European Union? There are uh, along the freeways, there are going to be rest areas where you might could spend a night. Yeah, uh, truckers spend their night. Yeah. Right, your truckers there are just like here, and they're overnighting somewhere. Yeah, but it is, it is packed. Depends packed. on where you are. Yeah. Sometimes they park uh, close and and, and uh, they fill up because they have to. The truck, semi truck drivers like here, they have to have their their. Uh, hours, their breaks, their breaking hours. So they have to park. And sometimes there's a small parking lot and lots of, of truck drivers. You can go for, I don't know, restaurants, ask them, is it allowed to stay when I have some drinks and can I stay in your parking lot? That's not a problem. That's the way you can go wherever in the world. You can do this in the, in the United States, you can do this in Europe. It's also. kind of a barter, you know, Bar yeah. barters everywhere. Exactly. I'll, I'll have dinner and can I just spend the night in your yeah, parking lot? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in, in your experience around the different areas of Europe, the European Union, there are people like us, van dwellers, who convert vans and move in and that becomes home. Yes, absolutely. We did it for, for vacation or when we were vendors and we, we uh, traveled. Is there any social media you want to tell the people at home about to contact you? or? You can find us on Rolling Vegans on Facebook or now oh, building up the YouTube channel. building up. It's channel. very new. So we do have uh, actually two um, YouTube channels. One is Abenteuer America, what, what is um, Adventure America. That is a very, very small one we do for our friends in Germany. And the other one is that we created now because of you, of the RTR, what I, what I told you, um, that we created this RVR in, in January while the RTR is. And, and we created um, our first English channel. And this is Rolling Vegans, and we show people on the road. I interviewed 10 people and, and, and more around about 10 now um, who live vegan on the road, full-time, mostly full-time, some part-time, some in converted vans, some in, in, in trailers, so huge uh, um, diversity of people. And, and we do some recipes, vegan recipes for for um, preparing vegan food on the road. If you want to follow and see who else lives on the road, the vegan lifestyle, you're very welcome to subscribe and, and, and or just watch the videos at Rolling Vegans on YouTube. And Very we do good. have the Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thank you so much. I really appreciate your sharing uh, your knowledge about Europe and your lives and previous videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. So, folks, there you have it. If you're interested in someday traveling in Europe and seeing if you can go over there and be a van dweller, either temporary or, or more, I uh, hope you got something out of this. Mainly, I guess the message is, like everything else, you got to Google it and do your research. Uh, that's really basically all it comes down to. So if you got anything out of this video, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank you so <laughs> you much. You did it. I hope, I oh, hope it is, it is oh. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. we're I'm shivering yeah, all the time. Sometimes there's so oh. much more you want to add and then you forget it and then yeah. you miss something. Yeah. And ah. I hope it is uh, helpful for some people. Oh, I know it will be. I hope. Did you know that Bob has a Patreon? <laughs>